Let's talk about Awad and Ayodhya, the history, the geography and the present about it. So let's first start with this whole region of present Uttar Pradesh. If I want to categorize this present Uttar, Uttar Pradesh into various regions, I can say this whole region which is marked in yellow is the region of Awad. Now this region of Awad is surrounded by the Nepal in the north, you have Purvanchal in the east, Rohilkhand in the north, northwest and the regions of of, uh, Ganga Dwab in the southwest. So those are the areas which surround this region of Awadh. Now traditionally Awadh, uh, the traditional capital of Awadh was Faizabad. In the Faizabad district you have the present Ayodhya that's there. But later on it was Lucknow which is the present capital of Uttar Pradesh uh, that is considered. So this is the region of Awadh. It was surrounded by Braj, Purvanchal, Bundelkhand and the uh, Rohilkhand regions. Now, if we look upon the Ayodhya, this Ayodhya, as I said, is located in the Faizabad district of Uttar Pradesh. It's located on Saryu River. Now, what's about the Saryu River so important? So, let's talk about a little on Saryu River. So, you have two rivers. Those are the Karnali River and the Mahakali River. The two rivers, the Karnali and the Mahakali rivers, Mahakali is also known as Sharda River. So both of these rivers join near the Bharaj and they form this uh, Saryu River. This Saryu, as the name suggests, is which is streaming, so which is flowing is the idea behind the Saryu river and it finally joins Ganga uh, in the region close to the Saran district. Also if we talk about the origin of the Saryu river it is originated in the Sarmul regions of the present Uttarakhand and uh, the Bageshwar district of Uttarakhand. So from the Bageshwar district you have the Nanda court and from the Nanda court you have the Saryu river that originates. So the origin of Saryu river is again important. Now, if we talk about the present scenario of Saryu River, it's very very important. A recent results or the recent researches which was conducted by Down to Earth and published in it shows that the fecal coliform content is much much higher than the permeable limit. So the permeable limit talks about 2500 um, most probable number per 100 ml is okay if it is found in a river. But in this region of Saryu River, it was around 4,000, nearly 4,000 to 5,000 most probable number per 100 ml. And therefore, you had a very high proportion of fecal colic forms that were found in Saryu and because of which uh, the health of the river becomes one of the major concerns as of now. Now talking about the historical basis. Babar, when invaded India, you had uh, his governor who was appointed as the governor of Awadh during that time was Mir Baki and most of the developments that took place in Awadh during the Mughal period were taken care by Mir Baki as he was the governor of the region. Later on, if we talk about the hierarchy of the Mughal period, it's important. So you had the Babar. After Babar, you had the Humayun who came in. Then you have the Akbar Jahagi Shah Jahan, And the last in the line was Bahadur Shah too. So that's the hierarchy under the Mughal uh, rule that was important. Now talking about the titles that were given. Titles under Mughal Empire was very very important aspect. So four of the most important titles that we would talk about is you have the Diwan. Diwan is the chief minister or he is in charge of most of the uh, administrative uh, responsibilities in the region. You have Mir Bakshi. Now Mir Bakshi was responsible for all the military uh, developments. So anything related to power war was under the control of Mir Bakshi. Mir Saman was uh, responsible for stores, for uh, street car khanas and all the other communication services. And then you have Sadar who was in charge of the religious aspects. So religious matters, charities were all taken care by Sadar. So these four divisions under the Mughal period are really really important.